Hey, guess what's happening on this week's episode of the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with your friend and host, Oscar Camejo. Well, hello, 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 my friends. Thank you once again for tuning in to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast. Let me ask you a question real quick. When was the last time you stood in front of a mirror or stood on a scale and did not like what you saw? I've been there before. I remember when I was overweight and feeling my worst people. I mean, I felt worse physically and emotionally. I was thinking to myself, man, what happened? How did you let yourself get so big? I mean, folks, the negative self-talk was unreal. It just kept getting louder and louder every time I would step in front of the mirror or get on the scale. You're talking about what? August 2020 when I was 268 pounds and man, dealing with type 2 diabetes and all this other stuff going on. The self-judgment was bad, folks. I mean, you talk about blaming myself for where I had ended up and beating myself up every day because I had gotten big. And many of you, that's where you are right now. You're standing in front of the mirror every day. You don't like what you see. You feel bad. And you're like, man, enough is enough. Maybe you're at that crossroads right now and you're like, enough is enough. Or you're probably at that point where you're like, you know what? Nothing's going to change. I might as well just do my best. Just try whatever I can. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Well, you know what, folks? It's time to stop blaming yourself. Stop beating yourself up for where you are right now. Enough is enough. It's time to shift. You know, we all want to be healthy. We want to live long. How we get there, we may take different paths. That's why in today's topic, we're going to explore the different diets, and weight loss programs, because there's so many to choose from. You want to lose weight, but you're confused. You want to lose weight, but you're frustrated because you're like, should I go paleo? Should I go uh, on the Weight Watchers diet? Should I be a flexitarian? Should I be, uh, I don't know, should I go vegan? Should I go vegetarian? There are so many options out there that people just don't know what to do. They don't know what to choose. Which one is the best? So we're going to deal with all of that today. So that what you can expect out of today's episode is you are going to learn the difference between a diet and a diet program or a diet plan because there is a difference. I'm going to share some tips for recognizing which ones are worth it and which ones are simply straight trash. And number three, we're going to talk about my recommendation for choosing what's right for you, because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about choosing what's going to work for you and that's going to be sustainable. So my friends, stick around to hear the rest of today's episode. It's going to be great. Let's go. Be sure to visit the website at www.beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com for access to free resources and other information that will help you along your journey. If you would like to submit a question or a comment about the show or to learn more about the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle, you can always email me at hello at beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this podcast. Welcome to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle podcast with me, your host, Oscar Camejo. It's season three, folks. And yes, we're still helping diabetics make lifestyle changes to reverse type 2 diabetes. Let's dive into today's episode, the best diets to help you make the shift towards good health, folks. You know, despite what you see in the mirror or what the scale says right now, like I said before, it's time to shift. Now, shift is an acronym I came up with, you know, S-H-I-F-T. It's an acronym for this. S stands for shape your thinking. H, heal your body. I, improve your lifestyle. F, finish what you start. And T, treat yourself right. That's right, folks. It's time to shift. It's time to shape your thinking. It's time to heal your body. It's time to improve your lifestyle. It's time to finish what you started. That's right. 
And guess what? It's time to treat yourself right because enough is enough with the whole beat up and the tearing yourself down. Listen, you've done that enough. It's time to change. Each year for the entire month of January, I make it a point to eat just vegetables and fruit. Now, the reason for that is I'm trying to give my body an opportunity at the start of the year to basically reset. I'm talking about now this is for me. No meat. I'm not doing any beef, fish or chicken, no lamb, none of that. I'm not doing any sweets, no breads, no rice, no pasta, no junk food, none of that stuff. Now, people may say, okay, Oscar, that just kind of sounds really normal, right? That's just like a New Year's resolution. Well, for me, it's not a resolution. For me, it's a reset. And for the most part, this is not all too removed from things that I do right now. Yes, I, on occasion, eat beef, uh, fish, chicken, lamb. That's on a regular basis. I'm not talking about at the beginning of the year or anything like that, right? Uh, I don't eat a lot of sweets. I don't eat a lot of bread anyway. I used to a lot. I used to eat a lot of rice before. And I typically don't eat pasta anyway. So that's kind of like my lifestyle, not eating a bunch of uh, pasta and junk food. I really turned away from junk food a while ago because, you know, what? I was like, you know, what? it's time for me to reset my whole lifestyle. But when it comes to January, that's that specific time for me to really hone in on just getting down to, you know, treating my gut, if you will, my gut health a little bit better, you know, because, you know, coming through the holidays, you may have some sweets here or there and and whatnot. And it's like, okay, now it's just time to reset. It's time to really get back to the basics. So that's what I'm talking about. Now, when it comes to diets and diet programs, you know, the U.S. News and World Report for 2024 put out an update to their diet rankings. It compares a whole bunch of diets and a whole bunch of programs that are out there that it will be great for a lot of people to take a look at. So I'm going to leave a link to the report in the show notes. So please take a moment to click the link and see for yourself and get a, uh, some comparisons of some things that you are probably considering for yourself, or maybe you've already started and you're like, okay, is this even worth it? Uh, X, Y, Z. So check that out. And I am going to talk a little bit about some of these diets and diet plans and programs and so forth to help you make an educated decision when you're talking about turning your life around and resetting for yourself and getting into high gear when it comes to shifting and in, in towards improving your health. Let me say this before I go on. When it comes to weight loss and losing weight, whether you're obese, diabetic, dealing with prediabetes, or you do have type 2 diabetes, we all want to focus in on, or at least we should focus in on reducing our body weight not just for aesthetics, but when it comes to health and our overall metabolic health, we want to treat our bodies better. We want to treat our bodies the way that they deserve to be treated. Our bodies need nutrients and minerals to thrive. So my whole goal when it comes to helping diabetics make lifestyle changes to reverse type 2 diabetes. I want people to really focus on what we're doing to our bodies, yes, but what we're also putting in our bodies in terms of nutrition. And when it comes to weight loss, yeah, we can focus on how many calories we're eating today versus what we're eating tomorrow and throughout the week and all that stuff. But listen, the quality and the type of foods we're putting in our body is very, in our bodies is very, very important. You see, just by losing anywhere between five to 15% of our body weight through changing our diet, changing how we eat and how often we're eating, is going to make a big difference. I mean, in my own personal life and the lives of other people that I've spoken to and 
I've done some reading and have seen some testimonies from other people losing significant amount of weight. Now, significant doesn't mean, oh, you have to lose 30, 40, 50 pounds or 80 pounds, like in my situation, in order to be in a position to reduce or uh, prevent type 2 diabetes or reverse it. No, you can lose you know, anywhere between five and 15% and start seeing dramatic results. So losing weight has the benefits of helping you to reduce your risk of developing type two diabetes or keeping it from progressing. If you have prediabetes, man, right now you're in a great opportunity or you're in a great space to reverse it. And prevent prediabetes from developing into type 2 diabetes. I mean, it's so critical for you to change and do whatever you need to do right now to prevent prediabetes from progressing. You know, losing weight will help take some pressure off your joints, folks. I'm telling you, I know exactly what I'm talking about. You talk about lowering your blood pressure, lowering your cholesterol, improving your sleep, and just feeling better overall. Folks, there's so many benefits. I'm telling you, you're talking about stress relieving and getting rid of inflammation. All of that to me is worth dropping the pounds. Yeah, some of you may be focused on uh, getting into a certain outfit or, or whatnot. But listen, there's more to weight loss than just that. We're talking about improving your overall health because, you know, what? there could be things going on inside your body that you're not aware of because of weight, because of uh, dealing with obesity and some other uh, issues that may be going on. Thyroid issues. I know somebody who's dealing with thyroid issues. I know somebody who's had some hormone imbalances because of Um, what they've been dealing with, with insulin resistance and and so forth. There's so much information out there, folks, and so many reasons for us to really get to the place where we can not only lose weight, but maintain a healthy weight. Now, healthy weight does not mean skinny because there's a lot of skinny people and very thin people who are very sick because they're on these certain uh, diets <laughs> and they restrict certain meats or meats period and they're not getting the essential vitamins that they need and they're actually sick and they're worse off than when they were eating certain uh, proteins and so forth. So I won't get into that right now, but we are going to get into it in, in a little bit. So folks, when it comes to choosing diets or Uh, ways of eating or eating patterns, as my friend Jamie Pope, a registered dietitian, nutritionist who I've had on this um, program, she likes to call it eating patterns. And just like she says, you know, you have diets or eating patterns. There's so many out there for us to choose from. And a lot of people get confused. It's like, okay, what is the best one? Again, if you go back to the uh, U.S. News and World Report um, rankings that I mentioned earlier, they talk about um, the Mediterranean diet, the paleo diet, keto diet, the uh, being vegetarian, going vegan and so forth. Even the carnivore, quote unquote, diet that people uh, are ascribing to, is that even healthy? Is that you know, should I only be eating meat, you know, or eating more, you know, red meat or eating lots of red meat because of the protein and iron and and so forth? Is that the way to go? Or should I be a flexitarian where I'm eating mostly vegetables and an occasional meat product like beef or chicken? Is that the best way to go? Or is it the Mediterranean diet that we hear so much about? Matter of fact, I do have a podcast episode where I go into the Mediterranean uh, diet or lifestyle pattern or eating pattern. And believe it or not, it is ranked the number one eating pattern, according to the U.S. News and World Report. Again, I think this is like eight years running. So it's something worth looking into. And let me say this also. 
I'm not here to push any one particular eating pattern or eating lifestyle because everything is nuanced when it comes to nutrition. You may not even like to eat meat products because of ethical reasons. It may not have anything to do with health reasons. You may say, hey, you know what? I don't like the how uh, food is being processed. Meats are being processed and what uh, what's happening to animals. So you're like, OK, I'm taking a stance against it and I'm not going to touch animal products, period. I get it. I respect that. Um, you may say, hey, I'm just going to be a pescatarian where I only eat fish and vegetables and that's it. I'm not going to eat chicken. I'm not going to eat beef. OK, more power to you. I mean, there's benefits to that as well. I mean, I love fish. I grew up in Miami. I grew up eating fresh fish all the time. I love fish. Probably my best or most favorite fish is the red snapper. It's just something about it. Maybe because my dad used to always make it, you know, but he also used to make a lot of steak, too. So like T-bones, I grew up on T-bone steak, even though my favorite cut is the ribeye. So, uh, yeah, folks. <laughs> There's so many options out there. Now, I believe there is a difference between diets, you know, eating patterns and diet plans or diet programs. Now you may say, okay, Oscar, you know, a diet is a diet, whether you're in a program or not. Well, I want to challenge that for a second. Now, remember, like Jamie Pope taught us, she said there are eating patterns. That's the same. That's another way of uh, describing diets. So when someone says, oh, I'm on a vegetarian diet or I'm on the Mediterranean diet, I'm on the flexitarian diet. That's basically this is how I eat. This is my pattern of eating on a regular basis. It's not a um, short term plan that you're on. This is just how I eat. You understand what I'm saying? Hopefully I'm making that clear. Now, what about diet plans and diet programs? I could think of a couple of them. You have Weight Watchers, you have Noom, you have Do Fasting, Nutrisystem, HelloFresh, Home Chef, Bistro MD, Diet to Go, and a whole bunch of others. So, yes, you have certain plans that say, okay, get on this plan, subscribe to this, pay this amount, and we're going to send you meeting uh, meal plans. We're going to send you a schedule on how you should eat, when you should eat, what things you should be putting in your bodies and X, Y, Z. Follow this 30 day program, this 60 day program, this 90 day program, and you're going to see results X, Y, Z. So you get my point, right? There are plans, diet plans that may ascribe to a vegetarian type uh, eating pattern and say, okay, for the next 90 days, I want you to go vegan. For 90 days, I want you to go keto. For 90 days, I want you to go Mediterranean or flexitarian or whatever, right? But they put you on a system or on a program that will help you to get from point A to point Z. So as you can see, there's a whole bunch of options out there when it comes to diet plans and diet programs. The main thing is when it comes to these programs, you want to find out what's going to give you the results that you're looking for. And you also want to re-examine your whys. Why is why am I trying to lose weight? Why am I trying to begin this new program? Is it just because it's the new year and I just want to lose some weight? I want to share these pounds. But what happens at the end of the program and you have lost the weight, you've lost the 30 pounds, you lost the 50 pounds, 60 pounds, whatever your goal is, what's going to happen after that? I keep sharing and telling people to really consider that. What is your lifestyle going to be like after you meet your goal? You want to think about the long term. You want to think about maintenance. You want to think about lifestyle. So when choosing a weight loss program for the first time, I want you to consider some of these factors. And there are five things that I want you to consider. Number one, is the program realistic? Number two, 
does a program offer structure and a structure that you can follow? Because it could, the program can have a structure, but it may not be easy to comprehend, easy to follow. Number three, consistency. Does the program offer consistency? Will it help you to develop consistency? That's very important. Number four, accountability. Does a program offer accountability? Whether it's accountability through a peer group, accountability to a coach or a trainer, what have you. Does it offer accountability? And I should say reliable accountability. Because, yeah, they can say, hey, upload your your weight for this week to this platform or email me, but you never get a response. Again, accountability to me is two sided. It's a two way street. Number five, sustainable. Is the program that you're considering or that you're on right now sustainable? Like, for example, beyond the 30 days. Is this or 90 days, whatever it promises, is it sustainable? Is this something that you can see yourself doing beyond that schedule or excuse me, beyond that time period, beyond the allotted time for this program? Because you don't want to get into a program that is going to help you to shred all these pounds in 30 days. And yeah, I mean, you look great after 30 days. But then it's not sustainable after that. You're left stuck like, okay, what do I do now? All right, so here are the five things again. Number one, realistic. Does it, number two, does it offer structure? Number three, does it offer consistency? Will it help you to develop consistency? Number four, will it help you to be accountable? Does it offer accountability? Number five, is it sustainable? Here's some other things to consider in addition to those five things. Does the weight loss program teach you how to eat healthier on a regular basis? Are you learning anything new in terms of new behaviors to help you sustain your new lower weight? Remember, I told you what happens after you lose the 30 pounds, the 10 pounds, the 20 pounds, whatever it is. Sustainability is very, very important. I've heard of so many people losing all this weight really fast. It's been a rapid weight loss. And within months, they gain it all back and then some. Folks, you don't want that to be you. If you've already experienced that, I know it's challenging. And sometimes it can be debilitating to the point where you're like, man, you know, I done tried this program. I done been on the Weight Watchers. I've done Noom. I've done the the bistro MD, I've done all of that stuff. And it just seems like, you know, I just couldn't hang on. I just couldn't do it. You know, life happened and I couldn't get back on track for whatever reason. Again, are you learning new behaviors? Because those new behaviors or those new habits are going to help you during those tough times. Here's another thing. Do you even know how to exercise on your own without this program? Will it help you to develop a new skill when it comes to your exercise? Because listen, folks, you don't want to have to be so reliant on this one program to uh, be healthy and not learn along the way. Yes, you want to learn new new eating behaviors and new habits, but you also want to learn about your physical body as well. These programs, I want you to choose programs that are going to help you to learn more about exercise, not just, oh, how do I do push-ups or how do I do squats, but really learning more about your anatomy, knowing more about your joints, knowing more about your muscles, your ligaments and so forth. No, I'm not saying that you have to go and become a student uh, in a a, a physical therapy and physical fitness. I'm not saying that, but you should be learning uh, how to do these exercises and what the benefit of those exercises are going to be. You don't need some personal trainer that just says, hey, just go ahead and push your sled for, you know, 20 reps or whatnot. But you don't understand why. Why am I pushing this heavy thing? Uh, I think it's helping me, you know, with my legs. 
But what about conditioning? Is it going to help you with your endurance? How is it helping you with your endurance? If I do these push-ups, uh, how are these push-ups helping me? I feel all this pain in my wrist. Is that supposed to be happening? You know, is our push-ups just helping me to strengthen my wrists? Are, are, I feel all the weight on my hands. Are, are, are the push-ups helping me to strengthen my hands? Of course not. There's a bunch of components um, that are being affected by push-ups, but you got to learn that. What about squats? Is squats just so you can have nice tone defined legs so that you can show off in the mirror like these folks do on Instagram? <laughs> so, yeah, it's like you got to understand why you're doing what you're doing. You know, folks, when I was 268 pounds, as I've mentioned before, and I've talked about my previous weight in challenges a lot. I probably talk about it in every episode. It was important for me, yes, to lose weight. How I went about it, I'll be honest. I have never gone on a weight loss program. I never signed up for a diet program, a diet plan. I never did any of that. I never even counted calories. I didn't count carbs. I didn't do any of that. I never signed up to work with a personal trainer. I never hired a personal trainer. That was Oscar. Now, am I discouraging you from counting calories? No. Am I discouraging you from counting carbs? No. Am I discouraging you from signing up for a weight loss program? No. Am I discouraging you from signing up and working with a personal trainer? No. What I am discouraging you and wanting you to do is not waste time and not waste your precious resources, your finances. I don't want you to waste time and I don't want you to waste money, folks. I know somebody who was getting ready to sign up for a program. I think the program was going to cost $12,000 or something like that. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. $12,000. $12,000. Yeah. <laughs> and the introductory meeting was like $400. This guy was going to charge this lady because people are desperate, man. I get it. And this is, I'm going to get on my soapbox for a little bit here uh, while I wrap up this show. Folks, listen, I know some of you all may be desperate to get all this weight off of you. You've probably been overweight for most of your life. Or maybe you ballooned up in the last three or four, five years or whatnot, and you're ready to get this weight off of you. I get it. I mean, I ballooned up to 268 pounds between 2014 and 2018. Four years of getting bigger than I needed to. But folks, listen, just because you're desperate to get the weight off, I don't want you to make dumb decisions. I don't want you to make foolish decisions. I don't want you to go and sign up for these programs that are designed to simply take money out of your pockets because it knows that people are desperate, especially the beginning of every year, the first quarter of every year. Gym memberships go up. I love going to the gym. I'm not saying don't sign up for a gym. I think you should invest in a gym that has quality equipment that is going to be functional and give you what you need. What I don't want, however, is for you to sign up for all of these programs that says, hey, we're going to help you to lose 30 pounds in 30 days and shed all this weight and burn fat. And you sign up for all these gimmicky programs. You know, my dad used to always tell me, son, be mindful of gimmicks. And I guess that's why I I don't get caught up in a lot of stuff and why I'm into marketing now. Mm. Shout out to my dad, Oscar Sr. R.I.P. You know, he was like, hey, don't get caught up, man. Pay attention. And so, folks, I want you to pay attention to these programs. Yeah, they could be offering you the world. It could sound so great. It could sound, what is that saying? Sound too good to be true. And if it does sound too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. Probably not worth it. 
So uh, I know I was going to tell you which ones were, which diet programs were the best and some of the worst and so forth. So the best one, in my opinion, is the one that goes back to what I shared with you before. That's realistic, that offers structure, that offers consistency, offers accountability, and that's sustainable. Now, what you choose to spend on a program, that's up to you. But I'm telling you, folks, I was able to lose over 80 pounds in less than a year by not signing up for any specific program. I did the basics. Yes, there were foods that I had to cut out because I just had to. There were foods that I started incorporating, more veggies, more fruit, eating healthier fats, you know, um, not overindulging in what I was putting on my plate, not overindulging in fried foods, cutting out fried foods and sweets for a time and stuff like that. I'll be honest. Yeah, I love brownies, but I know better than to eat, you know, three and four brownies at a time. Come on, man. It used to be wild. I'm at a point now where, yeah, I can eat, you know, a cookie here or there. Now, don't use that, folks, as a license to be like, well, Oscar said I can eat, you know, one cookie every day (laughs) as long as I just eat one. I'm not saying that. You're not going to put that on me. Mm -mm. I'm not saying go and just eat a brownie a day as long as you don't eat more than one brownie. I didn't say that. (laughs) So, folks, listen, the worst programs that are out there are the ones that offer all of these bells and whistles, but but have no substance. The worst ones are the ones that are, they seem to be cost effective at first, but then they trap you into these subscriptions. Because at the end of the day, no matter what program you subscribe to, you subscribe to, no matter what eating pattern you decide to go with, folks, all of these programs have one thing in common. I don't care which one you sign up for. You doing the work, right? You can say sign up for all these different programs, but if you don't actually put forth the effort to execute what needs to be done, you're not going to see results. But also, I just don't want you guys to just sign up to these programs just to be doing it because somebody else says, hey, look, I signed up for Noom and Noom changed my life. Well, is that going to be realistic for you? Is it going to give you the structure that you need? Is it going to help you to develop consistency? Is it going to help you to be accountable? Is it going to be sustainable for you? See, I could talk about this all day. I get on my soapboxes when I talk to people and, you know, I'm not trying to dog any program or any eating pattern. What I'm saying, folks, is listen, at the end of the day, Three months from now, what is life going to be like for you? You can sign up for these programs and they may say, yeah, you can have a quote unquote cheat meal or cheat day at the end of the week. Okay, great. I'm all for it. Go for it. But then what's included in that cheat meal? Are you just going to go ham and eat a bunch of fried food for that cheat meal? No, why? So, and I'm not saying be highly restrictive. I think there should be some restriction. So folks, listen, the answer to what you're experiencing with your weight is not because you haven't signed up for one of these programs. It's not because you haven't signed up for a gym. Listen, these are all tools and resources that we can use to help us along our journey towards good health. I just don't want you to make mistakes, folks. Too many people are losing out and being scammed. Sign up for this app and you see this thing come across your social media. 
and you don't understand how social media uh, 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 logarithms work. And the moment you type in weight loss, you, you're going to see a whole bunch of ads just pop up out of nowhere. Sign up for this program, sign up for this program. And all this stuff looks neat. You know, for just six ninety nine a month, you can we'll send you this and we'll send you that. <laughs> OK. You just got to vet these programs, folks. That's all I'm saying. Uh, hopefully you got something out of today's podcast episode, folks. I just I love people and I don't want to see people taken advantage of. So, yeah, the best diets to help you make the shift towards good health are the ones that are going to help you to develop the results that you need and achieve the results that you need. Not just not just the results that you want, but the results that you need. Any program that you sign up for, guys, has to be, in my opinion, providing you with foods that are going to nourish your bodies. Your body needs nourishment, proper and quality nourishment. Your body needs hydration. Your body needs water. I mean, we can't get around that. So I want you to get to the point, folks, where you're making smart decisions when it comes to how you spend your money and your time in terms of these diets and diet programs and plans and so forth. So check the terms and conditions of these programs that you've signed up for. If you realize that you've got into something that's really just draining your bank account each month and it's just not sustainable, cancel it. Trust me, cancel it. Let's get back to the basics, folks. Look up that uh, link that I sent you uh, or that I mentioned in the show notes. Uh, Look for those diets. Do some comparisons and you'll be surprised. Something like the Mediterranean diet does not require you to sign up for a specific program. Being a flexitarian doesn't require you to sign up for a specific program. Even being a vegetarian doesn't require you to sign up for any program, even going keto. None of those require going on a specific program where you have to spend all this money in order to get results. Folks, there's a lot of free information out there. There's a lot of free meal plans and meal preps that you can just download and really just follow. I mean, if you're looking for books, there are inexpensive books that you can download or go to uh, some of these bookstores and get you some material, man, and educate yourself when it comes to nutrition. Listen, folks, I can spend all day talking about this topic because it's near and dear to my heart. So again, If you've been feeling guilty by standing in front of the mirror, if you've been feeling guilty after standing on the scale, if you've been feeling guilty and feeling bad about yourself because you went to put on the dress or you put on these pair of jeans, fellas, and it don't fit like you expected, listen, don't lose heart. Don't give up. Don't cave in and quit. It's just simply time to shift. And trust me, as you make the shift, your body will begin seeing results. Your body will begin healing itself. And for those of you who have type 2 diabetes or or pre-diabetes, the goal is to reverse it. If I can do it, which I did, I know you can too. So, my friends, as always, stay focused, keep moving, never go back, leap forward, bounce back because you can, my friend. I did it. You can, too. But above all else, trust God. You got this. I believe in you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with Oscar Camejo. We hope you enjoyed this episode. As a reminder, this podcast is intended for motivational and educational purposes only. It is not a substitute for professional care by a physician or other healthcare professional or qualified fitness instructor. This podcast is provided on the understanding that it does not constitute medical or professional advice or services. If you're looking for help on your journey, seek a qualified medical practitioner. 
it's important that you utilize someone who is a trained, licensed healthcare professional who can help you on your journey toward good health.